The Last of Us Part 2 launches in just a few weeks, and we just got a state of play that gave us a good bit of new information. Today on GameX, here are 10 things you need to know about The Last of Us Part 2. Starting off at number 10, The Last of Us Part 2 starts off five years after the first game where Ellie is 14, and now she is 19. So, five years. Boom, math. After Joel pulled his stunt at the end of the first game, he and Ellie settle down in Jackson, Wyoming, in Tommy's settlement, and they've lived there peacefully for five-ish years until something happens to interrupt that peace, and Ellie sets out on a quest of vengeance. I'm gonna find, and I'm gonna kill, every last one of them. We still don't know exactly what happens, but it has to be something horrible if Ellie's willing to leave the safety of the settlement to go back out into the world to get her revenge. What we do know is that whatever happened was done by the Seraphites, a religious cult. Her quest leads her to Seattle, Washington, where most of the game is going to take place, although it won't just take place there. According to the state of play we just got, there will be a few different areas you get to see, different climates, seasons, and real life locations. Naughty Dog is supposedly putting a lot of detail into recreating these real life places. So, you know, if you know your way around Seattle, you might actually be able to make your way around the city and recognize places? Who knows? That's really all we know about the story so far. Thankfully, Naughty Dog hasn't said too much about what's actually going on here. Moving on to number 9, after Uncharted 4, I was wondering what parts of that game would make their way into a Last of Us sequel. And one of those things are open environments. During the recent state of play, Neil Druckmann said that Last of Us Part 2 features some of the biggest environments that his team has ever created. Which is quite a statement when you think about the Madagascar bit in Uncharted 4. I don't know if it's actually as big as I remember, but I remember it being pretty big. I'm not gonna lie, hearing about larger environments kind of gives me some anxiety. The Last of Us is an intense game, sometimes there aren't a lot of resources, and sometimes there are a lot of enemies around those resources that you need to collect. More environment means more resources to collect, and more enemies to sneak past or take on. So. Yeah, I think my anxiety is warranted, but it's not bad anxiety. The first game stressed me out a ton. Naughty Dog did a killer job of making you feel the intensity of these situations that Joel and Ellie found themselves in. Think of how intense any combat encounter is. The environments are so big here that you can actually get around by horse, and some streets will be flooded to the point of you needing a boat to navigate them. There's also the addition of the rope, which we'll get into in a little bit. Seeing that most of the game takes place in Seattle, it's obvious they're gonna be running around bigger environments. I mean, come on, it's a city. Moving on to number eight, there have been some changes made to how Ellie can get around. This might not be new to the series, but it's new for Ellie. She can swim now. I'm sure you all remember Ellie not being able to swim in the first game with the amount of pallets you had to swim over to her. I'm sure you'll never forget. Naughty Dog is also adding some verticality to the map this time around. So like in the first game, you're able to climb, but now you can climb over gaps. And I guess they're taking a page out of Uncharted 4 and granting Ellie the ability to use rope. You can use it to climb down from a high up structure, and you can also use it to swing over gaps. Like showcased in the video, this is going to give a lot more options, not only to getting around, but also exploring or collecting and other side stuff. You can also use this to your advantage in combat, using it to sneak around over or under enemies, or pull an Obi-Wan and use it to get the high ground and take out enemies with a bit of an advantage. Seeing that environments are larger now, you can also use horses to get around and also use boats to travel by water. At number seven, one surprisingly great part of the first game was its multiplayer. It was pretty unique and it had a pretty dedicated fan base, so of course we were excited for it to make its return in the sequel, but unfortunately, that's not happening. Naughty Dog put out a statement saying that they began work on the follow-up to the multiplayer, but as Last of Us Part Two grew bigger, they just had to cut it. They did say that we would get to experience that multiplayer mode at some point though, just not as part of The Last of Us Part Two. so hopefully we get to see that sooner than later, but there is one good thing about this. That Platinum Trophy just became a little bit easier to get because those Factions trophies in the first game were kind of annoying. At number six, there are going to be a few new enemy types this time around as well. First, there's the Stalkers, a new type of infected that will stay hidden and sneak up on you when they get the drop on you. Then there are the Shamblers, who look like bloaters but are heavily armored and will emit a spore cloud that burns you when you get too close to them. 
then Neil Druckmann teased other more dangerous new infected that we won't know about until we actually have the game in hands. Then there are the dogs, which we'll get into later, and there are also two new factions of human enemies. There's the Seraphites, that are a group of religious fanatics, and then the Washington Liberation Front. They fought to free Seattle from the military, but now they have control of Seattle, and they've become just as dangerous. At number 5, crafting and player upgrades was a big part of the first game, and Naughty Dog is fleshing that out a bit more this time around. In the first game, upgrading Joel was pretty simple, there were only a few things that you could actually dump points into. But this time around, you actually have skill trees, unlocking more as you play the game, and by finding training manuals out in the world. In the state of play, you see Ellie find a training manual that actually unlocks a whole new precision skill tree with five different upgrades that we could see. You also saw a survival tree, crafting tree, and a stealth tree with different upgrades you can unlock like weapon silencers lasting longer and 25% more health. So you can really fine tune Ellie to play how you want her to play. At number four, the weapon upgrade bench also returns and you'll be looking for spare parts out in the world to use when upgrading your weapons. Each upgrade you make is also visible on your gun, so if you add a scope onto your rifle, you'll see Ellie grab a scope out of her backpack and attach it to the rifle. Also, visually, the weapon upgrade bench looks really nice. Like, you see Ellie eject the bullet from the rifle, pull the bolt back, attach the scope. It's just beautifully thought out, and I'm already excited to dive in and start upgrading my weapon. On the fly, crafting also returns with Ellie having some new recipes like crafting arrows, explosive arrows, and weapon silencers. Coming in at number three, general combat is also getting changed up a bit. First off, Ellie is not Joel. He was a pretty big dude, and Ellie is a lot smaller, which leads to her being a bit more agile, and it gives her some advantages in combat. First off, she's able to dodge and counter enemy attacks. If you watch the state of play right away, you'll notice that the melee combat in particular looks different. It's a bit more fast paced and there's more to it than just wailing on dudes. You actually have to learn how an enemy attacks and look for openings to attack and dodge and it seems like fights will last a little bit longer and they seem a bit more intense in the first game. The upgrading system returns as well but this time it's more in depth to the point of allowing the player to actually create their own unique way of playing that caters more to how you want to play. Also just at the first game you'll have allies fighting by your side at times that will help you take out enemies or stun them for you to you know come and get the final blow. At number two, stealth was a very important part of the first game. Sometimes you were heavily outnumbered, and the easiest way to make it through a group of enemies was to stealthily take them out one by one. And in part two, Naughty Dog is giving us some new tools to do just that. But enemies also have new tools as well. Now they have dogs, and these dogs can sniff you out and give away your position. They don't patrol like normal enemies do. Instead, they're able to sniff you out and follow what Naughty Dog is calling a scent trail. You can use listen mode to actually see your scent trail and from there you can try and cause distractions to get them off your trail and just keep on moving and try to not stop and let them catch you. You also have the ability to go prone now and hide in tall grass but it doesn't hide you completely and enemies will notice you if they get close enough. So if you have to go prone you have to have a plan for an escape or take out whatever enemy is approaching you quickly and quietly. You can also scree through tight spaces and break glass and make getting away from enemies easier. You're also able to craft a silencer for your guns so you can take out enemies quietly from far away. Stealth is my preferred approach in any game, honestly, so I'm glad to see some additions made to the stealth mechanics here. Finally, at number one, we have to get some housekeeping out of the way. The Last of Us Part II launches exclusively on PlayStation 4 on June 19th, 2020. There's the standard $60 edition of the game, the special edition, which is $80 and comes with an art book, steel book, and some digital goodies. Then there's the collector's edition, which is $170 and comes with the special edition stuff, an art print, a replica of Ellie's bracelet, an Ellie statue, six pins, five stickers, and digital stuff. Finally, there's the Ellie edition, which is $230 and comes with all the collector's edition stuff plus a seven inch record and a replica of ellie's backpack there's also a special edition ps4 pro that looks really nice as well as a gold headset and hard drive also out there and you'll need at least 100 gigs minimum but then there's an image going around reddit of someone installing it on their console and it's a 78.3 gigabyte install so still in the same ballpark and those are 10 things you need to know about the last of us part two but we want to hear from you so meet us down in the comments and let us know what you think 
As I'm sure you already know, hitting the like button really helps us out. And if you're new here, subscribing is a good idea because we put up videos like this every single day. As always, thank you for stopping by and taking the time to hang out with us. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.